Jumping up in the shed. Um, been a while. Um, appreciate everyone following along, even though I've been a bit quiet um, with my videos and that. But um, we're just going to do something a bit different today. Uh, we're back in the shed and we're mounting up the, um, the garment to the front. I thought I'd better catch up with the times. Um, so here we've got the, the Garmin 10 inch unit and the, the light scope there. Um, going, going up the bow, so yeah, pretty excited about it to be honest. Um, I've seen a hell of a lot of coverage on it. Yeah, she's a pretty pretty cool bit of kit, so um, yeah, just gonna do a bit of time lapse stuff. First thing I've gotta do is give this show a good bloody clean up because it is an absolute mess in here. Um, I've had trips and things going everywhere and all sorts going on with the boat and, and getting out and about and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, there's lure boxes and lures and rods and all the rest of it. Flat down everywhere. Um, I've got a unit to pull off the front and new one going on. So we'll get cleaned up, get all from under the decks cleaned out, strip all the decks out and um, get this new bit of kit wired up. We'll get into it. Rubbish job, but pretty important. Make sure you've got that hooks and stuff floating around your deck when you are going to do these sort of jobs um, because you you know you get stuck into it. You get going, and the next thing you know, you've got to hook up your Russell coit. So, uh, um, yeah, long overdue for a clean up, too. So, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll keep going here and um, get a bit of gear stripped out, and then we'll start putting my new gear in. probably going to be thinking um, and if you're thinking this is going to be a video about bashing one brand or promoting another brand or whatever you've come to the wrong place that's not what this is about um, the idea behind the Garmin is basically to try something different I've been fishing under the Laurent Sanders uh, ever since I don't know I fished with the old man when I was a kid I suppose um, you know obviously the Garmin uh, LiveScope's been doing great things and I thought I'd jump on and see what all the hype is about. Um, I'm pretty excited actually. Um, and yes, the active target is out now, it's been released, so I've just taken a unit off that's capable of running that active target um, to put the Garmin up there. Um, it's personal choice to uh, to try a different brand and, and see what the story is there. Um, I do have some really good support from uh, Riverina Marine. They've been fantastic down there and uh, got a full range of the Garmin gear. So I um, went and seen them and yeah, walked out with a 10 inch um, EcoMat Ultra and the LifeScape transducer. So I just thought I'd just throw that in there um, just to, I don't know, try and clear it up a bit, I suppose. And let anyone know who's looking for me to bash a brand you've come to the wrong place. Anyway, let's get on with it. Just a quick note um, on the install. If you look at the instructions, which all I've done, and have a look at the wiring diagram that's in there, it shows, the diagram's a bit sketchy because it doesn't show you power going into the head unit. The head unit needs to be powered independently and then the black box also needs its own power with a toggle switch on it to be able to switch it on and off. So it's a little bit confusing, um, but basically yeah, your head unit has its own power source and your black box has, its, has a separate power source. So um, 
yeah, just just one thing I've made along the way, so hopefully that um, might help you with a bit of confusion. Um, another thing I've noticed is, I might just show you down here. How good's this gimbal? I reckon that is buddy awesome idea. So, you've got all your pins there, which match up, all your holes there, which match up with the pins off your head unit. So you can just clip your head unit out of that bracket. That bracket stays on there. So excellent for, um, you know, taking your unit off when you're uh, not near your boat, putting it away, or if you're camping or whatever. So I reckon that's a, yeah, that's bloody, that bloody clever, I reckon. So I don't know, maybe some bastard will still steal them bloody things, but anyway, yeah, so yes, power to the head unit, yes, power to the black box with the switch, so anyway, that's just a couple of things I picked up, other than that, it's it's pretty pretty basic really, it's all what they call, you know, plug and play, get your power in the right spot, cables through, network cable between black box and, uh, and the head unit, um, transducer's going to run the, uh, the LifeScap transducer is going to run uh, straight off the black box. Um, all right. A few of those little bloody black things, I'll call them, because I don't know what they are. They go onto where your cables join up. Not really sure why, something to do with noise or something. Um, which I guess is pretty important because you want nice climbing pitches. Anyway, I'll keep rattling along here and um, yeah, see if we can get this thing fired up today. So the other thing I've decided to do with this install is to add a third battery to the boat. Um, live technology draws a reasonable amount of power when I mean, you're having big days out on the water. Um, you want everything to be running running well. So uh, the 450 Quintrex has got a, a second crate up front here. So I'm gonna throw a box in. Um, I've got all sorts of bits and pieces here. Gonna uh, run a dual battery setup so it actually links in with the uh, with the cranking battery at the back, fuses and switches and god knows what. Uh, box there, we've got another battery there to go in, um, and you know the two batteries are going to talk to each other, um, so I can run power each direction if I get stuck or whatever. So, which would be good, which means you know nice clear pictures through the live scope because there's no voltage issues and things like that. Um, and then, yeah, just the other battery just runs the motor guard on its, on its own. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit more weight, but really with the tuned up uh, Yemi 84 uh, stroke in the back there, I don't have any trouble with the weight in this boat anyway. She'll, um, yeah, she'll sink before she slows down really. So anyway, we'll um, get fiddling here. I've got a fair bit of wire and stuff to do. So we'll keep on keeping on.
close. Isn't it? Anyway, uh, just another quick one along the way. Um, just with the power to the head unit here on the Garmin. Black and red, obviously um, negative and positive. Now you've got this transmit and receive wires here, which are to do with linking up with EcoMap units. Um, I'm not going to be doing that, so I'm just going to twist them over themselves and um, tuck them in there out of the way. So just a little tip, save your Google on that one. Uh, but other than that, it's all pretty straightforward. I've got my dual battery set up going. Um, inline fuses everywhere on that. Um, so now I've got my cranking battery hooked up to the uh, to the battery up here that's going to run the uh, the live scope off the Garmin there. Um, black box is in. What else is there? I'm not too sure um, yet what I'm using for a pole. I do have something uh, in the pipeline on its way, which is looking pretty good, but um, yeah, it's not quite ready yet, so I'll stick with the old PVC pole for now. And um, that'll be that, so I'll be poking that cable up through the deck and just sitting it on top. Uh... So we are all wired up here. Um, we're going to kick her in the guts. One thing I'll um, add in is you've got to run an isolator for your black box to run your pan optics live scope. Um, and so what I've done is I've actually linked that isolator, which is in my dashboard in there behind you. Um, I've linked that isolation switch into my head unit as well. Um, because they're running off their own battery, as I was telling you earlier. Um, so they're not running off my main, my main isolator off the cranking battery. So I've just linked them together. Oh, it's a bit of spaghetti, I can't really show you in there. If you need any more details on any of this stuff, um, just hit me up and I'll, um, I'll help you out with the sort of thing. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of fiddling around, a lot of mucking around, which is why I've, you know, we've done the time lapse sort of thing. But, Anyway, hope you uh, hope you enjoyed all that sort of stuff. And if you have any more queries, just yeah, just hit me up, and I can explain exactly how I've wired in. But yeah, so I've got a toggle switch on my dash, which will cut the power of the black box, um, which draws a little bit all the time otherwise, and will also kill the power to my uh, head unit. Um, I'll I won't run this head unit without the live scope on, which is the reason why that works for me. If you have a transducer hooked up to that head unit and you'll use it without your live scope then obviously you uh, you probably have to do a separate switch or you know if you're running it off the main isolator whatever it might be um, but for me that works anyway that's enough platinum it on we'll kick her in the guts here just like that we've already been through I set the English language up and all that bits and pieces um, I just want to test to see if the the uh, live scope picks up because I haven't had that on until now, so we'll have a look at that. Pretty cool bit of kit, this. I'm pretty pretty pumped about it actually. Even just to try Garmin out for for something different, I suppose. Like I've always been, I've always run Warrior Sanders, so it's it's good to. Have a bit of a muck around. Oh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. Straight in. Fan optics. Bang. Awesome. Well, that battery's old and plenty of voltage too, but look at that. So. Wait, do we go catch some gabbies now? Boys are having fun out there. Anyway, she's a goer. Good stuff. 